Well done, Paul. What a start. A 2-0 win here at Northampton. Could it have gone any better, your first game back in charge of, of Shrewsbury Town? Uh, probably not, in truth. Maybe if uh, Taylor had scored to the, for the third when he threw one-on-one, -on -one, but that would have been greedy, I think. Um, but what I would say, I think it was a, a very well-deserved uh, three points. I don't think, you know, it's not like we were lucky or it were a sort of in on the on the break or anything like that. And I'm just saying, we're just talking about the players, you know, who impressed. I, I thought they all did well, like genuinely all did. They all had moments in the game. Um, and a lot of what we spoke about or tried to maybe implement, we saw bits in terms of what Northampton offered. I think we nullified a lot of that. Um, and hopefully the players can take confidence from it. I've just said in there, I like, don't want to sort of rain on anyone's parade, but it's one game. I'm not, I'm not going to get carried away, but I guess going back to the initial question, for a start and driving, you know, getting up this morning and thinking about the game, you know, a bit of apprehension, uh, you know, I'm going to be truthful. Um, and I was still a bit concerned at half-time in regards to, it looked like the players had put so much into it, you know, I'm not quite sure where they are fitness levels, we've some at least, um, but they seemed to find a little bit more energy when they needed it. And a lot of that second half, I felt like I was looking to my right. And we had a really good spell where we kind of attack after attack, uh, but it took us a little while to get in front. And maybe when you've dominated the game, uh, or had quite a lot of the game certainly, and we didn't get in front, start to wonder whether we we're going to get it with a sucker punch. Thankfully we didn't, and of course we had to soak up a little bit of pressure. I think Marcos only had one real save, that I can remember at least. Um, so, yeah, really, really pleased. Some goal from, from Dan Udo as well, to, to get you under, get, get you up and running, that, that first goal since you've come back. Yeah, great strike. I thought he was excellent. I thought he, he got better as the game went on, in all honesty, as well. Because it's a, a difficult role, that lone striker. Um, you know, we part of the job, he's a centre-forward, but part of his job has got to be defending for the team and he, I thought he did that well along with Tom Bayliss more often than not pushing up to try and nullify the way that they build play and he, what a striker wants to score goals but he, I thought he always, you know, genuinely did a, a really good job for the team out of possession as well I thought we looked, you know, we looked a decent team today but as I said, that, that's only one game Always nice to, to see a set piece pay off as well, corner for the for the second for, for Shay Dunkley. We you know, I said I, I thought we could be a threat um, from set players. We tried one first half when Ship hit one and I think we'd have been talking about goal at season had that gone in, but it was it, they executed it well. Because in all honesty, the two days that we've had with them yesterday, we had a meeting, we were out on the pitch, they did a bit of work and then walked through a lot of things. But we, we didn't even get to doing set plays. So it was more around the up on the board and trying to just say if you've got any questions, let us know. Um, because it was a long day, longer than I would have liked in for me on a Friday, certainly. And the players have had a lot of information put in their heads. Um, some were probably confused and got headache. I think one or two, uh, the staff have told me aren't the brightest, so it's maybe been a tough couple of days for them. Um, but yeah, I think we got us, you know, Aaron and Shay in particular got their head on quite a few things in their box, but also some fantastic headers defensively as well. And you tweak things tactically, different approach with the way you lined up today. Happy with how that all, all played out? Yeah, look, that, that's always going to be a risk because the players in general, and you know, it, it was said that the squad in general was more recruited to play a, a sort of 3 5 2. Might go to that at some point, might do that between now and end of the season if, if I feel it's necessary but I think I prefer a back four in general we haven't got someone that you would say is an out and out right back but what I've seen of Morgan and the way that he plays I think he can do a job there now, I thought he did extremely well again because it, although especially the way Northampton play with the wide players rolling inside I think that perhaps helped and suited as well but he was you know, calm on the ball. He helped uh, set the goal up with a, when he drove inside and, and found Dan. So, yeah, it, it worked, and that's what we were working on. But that can go out of the window if you know it, it doesn't work on on game day. Uh, but I have to say the lads have been great in terms of their application. 
uh, probably what I'd expect, but they still have to do it, and um, they've got the reward today. And what about those scenes at the end as you made your way over to the uh, away end to, to enjoy the victory? <laughs> well, they, they, seem, they seem pleased to see you. Well, look, I've, got it, I've said, I, we've talked about that, I suppose. I think the majority are happy. Um, and I know it's, I don't mean it's any slight on anyone, but he's been pretty tough following, you know, George, speaking to Joe there, tough following um, town away from home. And they seem like they had a good, after, you know, pretty much all afternoon. They seem to have a good time. We got a nice reception when we arrived, albeit we had to rush in, get the team sheet in. And yeah, it's not, that bit from me is, is for them. It's not the, the thing that I want to do most, but um, it was nice because as I said at the start, what, and again, not getting carried away or talking rubbish, but this club for my time here means a lot and I want to try and come back and be as successful as I can. And like I said, that's just a, a nice first result that we got. Busy few days ahead. Do you anticipate, Paul, with the, uh, the transfer window closing shortly? Possibly. Um, there'll definitely be a lot of conversations. You know, I've just spoke to Mickey then and we'll speak. Um, you know, first thing Monday, and we'll be at games, and then we've got a couple of days to see what happens. The, you know, there's a few situations that we uh, are looking at. I don't envisage kind of wholesale changes. You know, I think what's become apparent very quickly. You know, we we haven't got a lot to work with, so but we'll try as best because I still think that you know an addition or two could still give us different dynamic uh, and give the lads like I said they're already in the squad that help um, and competition that we're going to need between now and the end of the season. Nathan Fraser from Wolves has been heavily linked with the club throughout January, yeah. does he remain a target? Well, we've, we've spoken and I've, I've done some kind of my own work if you like and it's all been positive but my understanding is that it's very unlikely because of their situation. Um, if that changes, I'm told that we'll be the first to know. Um, so we'll see, but we can't just anger that on, you know, one player. We've of course got to look at everyone, and, and this is what kind of we again we've discussed. Let's not rule anyone out either, even if it looks unlikely, because things can change very quickly. We might get a big bidding for a player, as who knows? Like so, you've got to be ready to act if you chose to. Um, to try and do some business. Great start today. Thanks for your time, Paul. Thanks, Stuart.